What's up, guys? Welcome to the Serving Up Podcast, where I get to know individuals through the three pillars of eat good, look good, live great. Now, today's guest, she holds true to her name, and she shines like a star in the fitness industry. She's a top Canadian fitness model, a personal trainer and online coach, international bikini competitor, competing at places such as the Canadian Nationals, Arnold Classic, North Americans, as well as the Caribbean Grand Prix. She's been in multiple fitness magazines, including numerous editions of Inside Fitness's Hot and Fit Top 100. She is owner of Star Lifestyle, as well as a good friend, Tasha Star. Welcome to the Serving Up Podcast. What's up? Happy to be here. Thanks for joining us. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I can't complain. Can't complain. We had a little like difficulties in the beginning. And like you said, you're like, you have a history with that. So for anyone who wants Tasha on their podcast, try it like twice first before you like start on this thing. Sure. <laughs> All right. So uh, Tasha, first things first is I always say that there's a, there's a saying by Brian Savant. He says, tell me what you eat and I'll tell you who you are. So I asked you before we came on here of uh, a food or a drink so that we can have while we're doing the podcast. And well, for, any, for anyone knowing, you are, you're dieting. You're well, dieting. I said what food. So if, if uh, what I eat tells you a lot about me, then I'm not eating anything right now. <laughs> you're dieting, right? We can get into that later. But okay, so you sent me a recipe. What do, we, what do we have? So I made a healthy <laughs> blended boozy frappuccino. So... Instead of using like whole fat milk and sugar and full fat whip and all that jazz, it's uh, two shots of espresso with a cup of unsweetened cashew milk, um, the desired amount of ice to your icy preference. I got um, somewhere. Helped with the xanthan gum because I wanted something that made it a little more like body. Yeah. Uh, that little. I used about an eighth of a teaspoon. It worked out good. Um, and then a shot to two shots of spice rum. I'm not going to divulge. What Neither am I. <laughs> <laughs> and then now my melting uh, low fat whip and a sprinkle of cinnamon. True. Cheers. Cheers. Bam. All right. So let's get right into this. So first things first. Um, how have you been for COVID? How's everything? Honestly, I really can't complain. Um, I basically work from home all the time because all my stuff is online coaching. So in terms of that, I mean, I, I was a little anxious at the beginning just to see how things would unfold in terms of people losing their jobs and not wanting or not being able to go to gyms. And I was actually very shocked at how much increase in demand there was for online coaching um i don't know if it's just more my niche which is lifestyle and and having a lot of flexibility within the type of work that i do but i had like tons of new signups the first couple of months um which was awesome like people really wanted the support and guidance for at home because they knew they you know weren't going to be able to do very much so it was like if i'm going to invest anything uh, any time or money into something I want it to be this yeah uh, so that was I couldn't complain there um and then because of our connection with pure the guys really helped us out and gave us an awesome home setup so like my training's fairly basic I can do almost everything with a couple plates and bands basic. so basic we'll, we'll get into that we'll get into that but that's cool <laughs> that's good that's good because from when we first met till now, it's watching how you've grown into, you know, owning, owning Star Lifestyle. We'll get into that also, but it's crazy. So you brought up something which is really what a great leeway into our first segment, which is eat good. Eat good, which is all about food. And you said something which is your clientele and your sort of uh, how you go about things is all about lifestyle. Me and you, we all talk about balance and being able to like live a fit life, but also eat. And we eat. We eat and we cook. We both love to eat. and you eat as much as you work out. And this yeah. is a good thing, you obviously. Um, yeah. where, did, where did that like love for food come from? I'm gonna have to say from my mom and my grandma, um, like, I grew up around food. My grandma was like known within the family to be 
like the OG cook. So she did everything like from cooking to baking to whatever, like she could do it all. And obviously my mom came by it naturally always being around her and, and became interested and fell in love with food. And then it just kind of trickled down to me. Um, and I always loved food, but I don't think I really found a passion for cooking until I was a little bit older and even more so, um, in the last few years between trying to find ways to make healthy food still taste good. And then, you know, when I want to indulge trying to find like these crazy recipes, especially during COVID, like I yes. go out, I'm making all these insane recipes every weekend. And like, there was a couple that became like staples, but then I would want to try something new and be kind of like, Oh my God, is this going to work out and be as good? But it always ended up working out. So that's cool. Cause actually that's what I wanted to bring up. Cause for those who follow you on your socials and stuff, you literally for every like fitness post you might post something food wise it's very very balanced that way um and you do exactly what you said you do like a um healthy food for sometimes when you're dieting all these ma macro friendly stuff but then you'll go straight up to like the cheat meals and all that and you do it every saturday we tried to plan yeah. this and you're like let's ch maybe we can get on a weekend so you get a cheat day or whatever yeah. but so when you come to doing your cheat days right? When you're just, just cooking in general, what yeah. do you sort of lean towards one sort of culture? Or are you more like, I am really craving this. I want to make this, or you saw this, or is it Cody wants this and then I'm going to, I'm going to have to make it for him. Sometimes he wins. Um, but generally I would say like, I tend to crave for the most part, some type of like epic sandwich style thing, be it fried chicken, burgers, that kind of stuff. Um, I always love having fries. There's something about like that crunch. They're just so satisfying. Like, I don't know what it is, but um, yeah, I mean, I just, if I see something that I really want to try, I'm open to it. Like a few weeks ago, I made this crazy, like sesame garlic ramen with a and cracked an egg on top and it like created its own sauce. Um, and then who's the other, I've made tacos. I made short rib tacos and like, uh, the fried fish tacos the one time. You made, so I, tried, I think was, that? was it this weekend you made like Miami short ribs or like bulgogi ribs? That was, uh, two weeks ago when I made the ramen. Mm -hmm. Okay. Got you. Um, so, um, but then this past weekend, I actually had one of my friends over finally for like the first time ever during this whole thing. And uh, my fried chicken sandwich has been a hit with Cody, with my parents. So I tried it out on her and she was like blown. So I would say my two favorites are the fried chicken. And then also this burger that I like pieced together a bunch of different toppings and it ended up being ridiculous cody wants that every single weekend like that's basically oh. the thing i have to override his burger desire if i want to do something different i mean okay so when you cook is it a whole day process because like obviously you're not you're not a professional chef but you are really good you're a really great home cook um, thank you like so what it, do you consider yourself like when you, most people cook they're like oh my god cooking is a chore it's gonna take me a couple hours to do or are you more like I come in, do my thing, get in, get out. If I'm being perfectly honest, it's, I'm a little, I'm, not, I'm, not gonna, I'm very heavily OCD'd. <laughs> um, so I'll often start my prep a day in advance. Okay. And then when it comes down to the wire and I'm like really getting everything ready, and no one ever sees the behind the scenes. And I feel like I should almost post sometimes because it's hilarious. And Cody is like constantly taking videos and laughing. I crank music. Like if it's some obnoxious EDM or trap or whatever, I dance around the house like a mental case singing, usually have one to two drinks and I cook at the same time. So it's like a You're kitchen. Like, it's that's the best though. It's so, so the best. Okay, that's and the thing I like about you is that you said you do the prep ahead of time. Yeah, it's very key because a lot of people just end up cooking the one day, and it's like for when you work in oh restaurants, my. exactly, it helps so much. You know everything if you're missing whatever. That's cool. That's cool. Like I said, you're better than you think you are. Trust me on that one. 
Thank you. Trust me. Uh, Master Chef, hook her up, hook her up ASAP. <laughs> okay, um, now we get into cheat meals. We get into what you're cooking. Let's talk about donuts. Oh. Donuts. Okay, so for anybody who's watching and doesn't follow Tasha, she does a weekly donut review on her Instagram. Um, it started, I think, was it pre-COVID or during COVID? Um, I think it might have been just before or like maybe at the beginning of it because I know I had a couple of videos stockpiled actually just from sending them to friends. Yeah. And one of my good friends lives out west and uh, she can't seem to find a, a solid donut place there. And when she came to visit last year, I took her to Donut Monster and she was like, oh my God, these are insane. So every time I would go get them, I would take like these silly videos in my car with like Ludo in the back seat, him like popping in. <laughs> Ludo's my dog, by the way, in case people yeah. don't know. He's probably gonna make a guest appearance if he's sleeping right now. He has to, Ludo has to. Yeah, but yeah, so I would send her these videos and she was always dying. She's like, these are gold. I need you to like do something more with them. So eventually it just became a thing. I was like, maybe I'll throw a couple out there and mm -hmm. see what people think. And everyone loved it, so. So why donuts though? I don't even know, like growing up, well, I mean, when I was young, funny enough, and I didn't really ever make this connection till now, but when I was young, my parents, we would drive up to the cottage every single Friday after school, um, and I rode horses at that time, so we would drive up, they would, we'd make a little pit stop in Newmarket to like go to the washroom, get coffees, whatever, and every time I would get like a Tim Hortons donut, and then I'd go to the farm and ride, yeah. and then that was that. What's that? What donut would you get from Tim Hortons? I feel like it was always a Hawaiian. Like, or that's like one that really comes to mind. It's Hawaiian. So, isn't it the one the, with the vanilla glaze and then the rainbow sprinkles? I have no clue. I think that they called it a Hawaiian one back in the day. Maybe oh. they changed it now. Maybe it's just like a rainbow sprinkle now. But I feel like when mm. I was a kid, they called it. Because it looked yeah. tropical. I don't know. <laughs> okay, okay. And it, and you know, once in a while, like a fritter or a cooler or something like that. But I feel like Hawaiian was kind of my go-to. But yeah, I did, wouldn't have ever even thought of that. Um, and then like years back, this place downtown Toronto opened called the Rolling Pin. And they were kind of one of the pioneers of yeah. crazy in Toronto I would say and I remember seeing them actually on the donut showdown on TV and I was like wow this place looks actually really cool so I finally went to try them one time and I was hooked to the point that I would drive when I was training at that time at 365 which was about a 22 minute drive door to door I would drive two times a week to go get two donuts post-workout at that point like it's worth it though they're they're very good so good they're so good funny enough then like I uh moved back downtown when me and Cody started dating and then we eventually ended up moving to Burlington I was like oh great now where am I gonna go get donuts you'll find then, them not monster out here thank god they're actually delicious so it's I don't uh I mean I would love to go visit Rolling Pin but it's a pretty big hike now so I kind of wait till I'm in the city to go by and then okay so for your donut reviews, what's been yes. your favorite donut that you've done, that you've had at least? doesn't have to be Donut Monster. It could be any of the donuts that you've reviewed. Oh my gosh. Um, it's funny, actually, someone asked me this recently and I couldn't remember. I can't, I don't know, like there was a few at Rolling Pin that were just mind blowing. They had this cookie dough stuffed one that was insane. Um, they uh, the cookies and cream and the red velvet were two of my favorites for a really long time. But from Donut Monster, people were asking. I was like, I don't know. I don't know. And then literally last week, they posted that they brought it back. Because they tend to, like, rotate different seasonal flavors. Okay. So they make epic fritters. But the ultimate fritter there that I ever had that is hands down my favorite is the banana nut chocolate chip fritter. So I'm a banana it, guy. You had me a banana. You're good. Like, okay. Right? If banana bread and a donut had a baby, this is like their sweet love child. Have you had the cronut? 
Um, Donut Monster doesn't make one, but I went to Beachwood once and had a cronut there, and it was, like, ridiculous. You gotta have, like, the real one. So, I'm, like, the, you have to go to New York. Just go. What? I had one in, uh, in, um, L.A., too, when I was there a few years ago. Oh, from I Dominic Ansel? Was it from Dominic Ansel, or? DKs. Yeah, DKs. Yeah. So good. So good. But, um, uh, what was, I was gonna say something to you. Ah, oh, damn it. Oh, I forgot. Yep. But anyway, oh, there's an amazing apple fritter that you have to go in Kitchener Waterloo. It's, really? It's in St. Jacob's Farmer's Market. So when I okay. went to Conestoga, I went to Laurier. Um, I would go to the farmer's market every week to just like chill out and find things and like buy groceries and whatever. You know, I'd buy like garbage bags of corn for two dollars. And as a like as a as a student, that's like you can survive off that. Yeah. But they have a really, really good apple fritter in there. Like, that's huh. all they do in that Welsh stall is an apple fritter. Trust, if you type in St. Jacob's apple fritter, it's good. You'll like it too. There's, there's a bunch of trails that you can take Ludo and like, it's good. I'll, I'll, I'll talk to you about this after. But so Perfect. after favorite donut, what's been the weirdest donut? <laughs> Literally last week. So, and uh, like this donut drove me nuts for a week. I thought about it. So I was sitting wait, the wait, one day. Hold on, hold on. So you 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 pre-plan a week. Sometimes it depends. Like so, Donut Monster because they started doing pre-orders because of the whole pandemic. Okay. So sometimes they'll put out new flavors, and depending on what day you're doing your pre-order, you might catch some of the new flavors uh, on the menu. Okay. So the one day I was waiting to see if any pre-orders came out, I was like refreshing, 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 <laughs> a little few too many times. And then I see this one come up, and I'm like, what? Dill pickle donut. So uh, my first reaction, hard pass. And then, you know, I did my order that week, and, like, this donut wouldn't leave my mind. Like, I'm like, what? Like, seriously, let go of the dill pickle donut. But I was like, well, maybe I need to try it. What if I'm missing something? Or, like, maybe I just need to know. Like, so anyways, long That's story short. The following week, I had to order it, which was last week, and I did do the review on it, mm -hmm. and, like, I feel, obviously, it fell flat for me for a couple reasons. Um, one, I felt like there was no flow to it. Like, there just wasn't really a connection. You know, a lot of times, you have sweet and savory, and there's a really good balance, and it works out, and you're like, okay, this is fantastic. But it was just odd. Like, the icing... If I had to guess what was in it, it, there was obviously some dill. You could see the dill. Um, and it was a sweet icing. So it wasn't like just a savory donut. The yeah, icing was... Yeah. There was like a hint of lemon. And I think they probably put a little bit of like pickle brine in it. Um, and it wasn't bad, but it was just like weird. Mm -hmm. And then the, the pickle itself on top, like the, the fried coating was great. But there was literally like a toothpick of pickle. Mm -hmm. So... I don't know. I kind of like, eh, like it was uh, disgusting, but I wasn't gonna, you know, waste a whole donut on it. So, yeah. well, it's funny because like I saw your review, and it made me think because I was watching, um, I can't remember, what was, I was watching another food video or food uh, show, and this one place they did pretty much a dill pickle pie. So it's oh. like, so their sort of mindset behind it was it's like lemon meringue or key lime but just using the pickle for that extra. Yeah. Uh, and that was, I was like, oh, that kind of makes sense. I get it. So when I, yeah. so when I saw your review and I saw you talk about that dill pickle one, I'm like, oh, they like, they missed it. Cause if you think of it from like the lemon meringue or a key lime, that extra pickle, it, it, all, it makes sense. It, there's that flow that you're, you were missing, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Like I feel like it could be tweaked and then maybe be something a little better or maybe even like, just ditch this fried pickle on top altogether and figure out a way to make the icing more like balanced. Candied, candied pickle or something like that. True. Okay. Um, so you get creative with your meal prep. I get creative with my meal prep food. Um, what's the most creative meal prep thing that you've made or that you've had to make? Do you remember? I think probably the best thing that I end up coming up with and that, well, I mean, I know a lot of people have done it, but I didn't know that it was a thing. I just kind of tried it and it worked. 
and there's sort of two versions of it. So, um, what the oatmeal like protein pudding, most of the mm. time I will make it with actual protein powder, which makes sense. Um, but I decided to try it with egg whites. So I would cook the oatmeal and then slowly pour the egg whites in while I was stirring it, put a couple drops of stevia and it thickens up into this like amazing like oatmeal pudding. Like it's yeah. so, so good. Every morning I look forward to it, off season prep, whatever. Like mm -hmm. that's and then I remember when I was dieting one time and I, I was like I had it. I had it twice a day. I loved it so much. I was having it for breakfast and for my last meal, but obviously that my food started getting lower. So by the time I was getting to my last meal, you know, I was getting down to like a tablespoon of oatmeal. <laughs> and I was like, Hey, where do I go from here? And I started thinking about, you know, eggs in general and how you use them to make custard. And I was like, I wonder if there's any way to turn egg whites into a custard. I know there's not that like smooth, fatty, yolk that's gonna help it but maybe I can like figure something out and ended up finding a way um kind of like I think I can't even remember I made it in so long but I would heat up cashew milk first unsweetened just plain cashew milk um and then kind of temper the egg whites with it and then slowly pour the egg whites back and cook it over low and like whisk the living daylights out of it and it plays up into this like big beautiful like custardy souffle thing and it's great warm it's great cold like I would make it put it in the fridge and then it'd be like a pudding like it was great and I, I you know freeze mine huh freeze it I freeze because then when I was prepping I I, I love that meal so much but I wanted to savor it so I'd freeze it so it's hard and then because it's still got like the carbs and like the oatmeal and stuff, it'll start to like break down and almost yeah. be like a popsicle. So I'll just take a spoon and start like chunking pieces out of it. And like, but one, what, what I would do is I'd take the oats and I'd actually blend it and turn it into an oat, oh, flour, yeah. first, an oat flour first or whatever. Yeah. And I got to a point where I would even use a hand blender to like cook it. That's what we do. So we do that with like ice cream bases, like an anglaise, like to make ice cream. So Wait, you whisking, you would, and then simply to get the aeration, you just move it up and down and then, yeah, but it's killer. It's so good. I love it. It's the best. And like such a great diet recipe too, because it still satisfies the sweet tooth without having really anything in it. Yeah. I don't know if, I don't think, uh, um, I don't think like, Cody ever told you, but I, when Cody was prepping me for a show, I remember I had like 50 grams of rice and then like 50 grams of rice and like four ounces of chicken or something, something like yeah. that. Anyways. And what I did was I remember I took the rice, I cooked it and then I flattened it onto a pan and just fried it like with like just dry, dry roasting it. Yeah. And then it became rice cakes, but it's cooked weight. So then, it, so then that 50 grams that if you think it's actually not 50 grams, it became like 10. So that got yeah. like five of them. And then I took the chicken and I made like a salad with like stuff and then like it's a nice chip, but that's one thing I remember. That's uh, awesome. Uh, okay, question is, what's a dish that you want to learn, Tasha, that you're like, doesn't, it's not diet food, but it's just like, I want to learn how to make this dish. Well, actually, one of the things that I had said I was going to do during the pandemic, I never did, and I bought all the stuff for it, was I wanted to actually learn how to make donuts. Ooh. So I, I, you. I feel like you should have. I know, but you know what the thing was, is that I really love having my donut on Saturday right when I wake up with my coffee first thing and I felt like if I had to wake up and be prepping donuts for two hours it would take that instant satisfaction that first morning relaxed bite wouldn't be the same because I'd already be like all amped up from being up and doing this and doing that and I even tried to figure out ways to like kind of prep in advance and everything was just kind of like ah, I still have to wake up and fry a bunch of donuts get the oil fry up eventually yeah now, I'm not saying that I still won't try I just have like I almost feel like I want it to be an occasion so I have a reason to do it so I can like make them for people or whatever but okay. just to, the occasion know, will be like when when COVID's all done we, we'll just make donuts one day that'd be amazing we'll just make a bunch of donuts and um, I have flavor ideas too i'd written them all down like <laughs> i don't i don't that's not even surprising to me 
I already knew. You have like a menu ready. Um, yeah. All right, talk. Is there a food that you hate? Like something that just like I cannot cannot put in my mouth. I wouldn't. I wouldn't say I hate it because I've literally never eaten it. It's just more of a, I can't, like I wouldn't be able to, it'd be horse, like any type of horse meat. That makes because sense for you, 100%. I, I, I feel like it's weird because I don't have any issues eating it. There, like other, like cow, pig, chicken, whatever. And I don't, You're so not much. missing out whatsoever. Huh? You're not missing out whatsoever. Yeah, I just, it, I can't, like, I feel like I'm eating my horse, and that's I, had, I remember I tried it once at a, because I was working at, like, a French restaurant, and they yeah. had like, horse carpaccio. It tastes like any other, like, they, Same. they're kind of so thin, and, like, you're not, no one's gonna have a horse steak ever, because it's too lean, and yeah, none of that. All right, all right, Tosh, we're gonna get into a thing called in the weeds, so I, I'm not sure if you know what in the weeds are um, for restaurant terms. It's when we're in the shits, where the chits are coming in, orders are slammed, it's the prime time. It's when, you know, you go into the back of the kitchen, all the chefs are like, fire, 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 order, it's what? So what we're going to do is we're going to do a rapid fire question and you simply just answer whatever one comes to mind right away. Cool? Yeah. All right, so let's do this. Cream filled or jelly filled? Cream filled. Mm. Ooey gooey egg, molten chocolate, or crispy skin? Oh, shit, man. Um, oof, crispy skin. Protein bar or a protein cookie? Protein bar. Would you rather be a pastry chef or a savory chef? Savory chef. Sushi or burger? Burger. Bobby Flay, Robert Irvine, or Guy Fieri? Oh, Guy, I'm a diners, drive-ins, and dives junkie. <laughs> All right. Giada De Laurentiis, Rachel Ray, or Paula Deen? Giada. Okay, cool. <laughs> All right, we're gonna go right into now look good let's talk about health fitness aesthetics what most people know you for yes so you went from bartending to fitness there's an in-between what's the in-between bartending to psychotherapist to fitness okay spill the beans i'm ready for our session i don't i don't recall well yeah i was um I started going to school for psychotherapy when I was still bartending. Okay. And there were so many crossovers. So bartending, school for psychotherapy. Then as I was in school for psychotherapy, while still bartending, I started getting into fitness. So there was a period of time where everything was sort of blurred. Um, I finished school. I was working at two different practices, had clients, the whole jam. And uh, then progressively started getting more into more into fitness and then ended up down the line being a coach which is having the psychotherapy background as a coach is like a massive oh, for sure. I didn't even realize when I first started but as I've gotten more and more into it and especially now that I have my own business it's become like a huge asset you and do you you don't promote it as as much as like you could to be honest yeah. I've been told that a few times. I don't, it's just tough because I think that there's a lot more awareness and a lot more openness about mental health and getting help. Um, but I still feel like a lot of people are maybe a little bit intimidated by it. So I don't necessarily like to just throw it out there and be like, this is, this is what I'm leading with. Um, but I like to, you know, emphasize that the mental, emotional focus and support is a huge aspect of my coaching and then kind of like lead into it from there. That's, it's so important. It's actually really cool because I actually really don't think I remember this, but um, that helps so much because dieting sucks. Dieting, one of the biggest parts of dieting we all know is just mental. It's yep. always mental and that, that's a really, really cool, cool like combination. So yeah, it's interesting. Um, first show, Mississaugas. Yes. Right. How did you do? Okay. I mean, I went into it and I'm like, I'm winning this shit. How did you get into fitness? How did I get into it? Like, how did you? When did you like? I'm gonna compete. 
So, and, uh, like, I was always competitive. I grew up riding horses. I did, like, professional equestrian show jumping. Uh, and then, like I said, I got into bartending and all that stuff. And I, I don't know, in my early, mid-20s, I decided I needed to start working on my physical fitness again because I had kind of been slacking on that. And I wasn't really living the healthiest lifestyle, like bartending three, four nights a week, staying up till four in the morning drinking way too much, eating way too much shit, like sleep schedule was awful. Yeah. Um, I gotta do something to try to counterbalance this. And I started working out at the gym and this guy kind of took me under his wing and started showing me the ropes of more style training. He wasn't a trainer or anything, just like a mutual friend. And he was like, okay, I'll help you out. And I hated cardio. So I was like, okay, this is cool. I'll, I'll try the weightlifting and see how it goes. And like totally fell in love with it. Mm. Uh, and then one of the trainers at the gym actually approached me and he was like, well, why don't you try doing a show? And this was kind of like just when bikini was starting to come out a little more. So I think it was 2013, I want to say. Okay. I think 13 was my first show. And so I'm like, well, I don't know, man, like I got a diet, like my lifestyle's crappy. I don't know if I can do that bartending. How am I supposed to stay on a diet when I'm bartending all night? And then I remember this moment and I saw a picture of a girl who had done a show and I was kind of like, okay, she looks good, but I don't, don't really feel like I'm that far off from it. Like maybe if I make a little more effort, I can get there. What's the harm in trying? Yeah. So. I started prepping for my first show. I knew a girl that was in the industry that had competed um, in WBFF as well. I'm not sure if you ever heard of her or remember her. Her name was Kelly Boone. Sadly, she passed away yes. years back, which was awful. Um, but I hired her and she helped me for my first show. And uh, yeah, like I was, I loved the process. It was hard, but it was, you know, I, I was always up for a challenge. I, because I'm so OCD, I really thrived on everything because I was so meticulous. Even for yeah. Kelly, she would tell me to do something and then I'd start researching everything and be like, what about this? What about this? What about this? And she, would, she was great. Like she was actually really open-minded. And like, I know a lot of coaches these days and I'm guilty of it too. If you have a client and they're like, well, what about this? What about this? You're like, can you just let me do my job? Yeah. But I think she was learning a bit at the time too. So it was nice. We kind of did feed off each other and I learned a ton through the prep and was so interested in understanding and researching on my own that it was like just all around a great experience. And uh, I ended up placing eighth and the feedback I got was that my tan was too light and my posing could be better. Um, just a little bit more conditioned, but like, okay. But like the one judge was like, the reason that you're out of the top five was because of your tan. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that hurt a little bit. Um, but I decided to drive on and I did my second show November that year in London. And I actually prepped myself for that show and won my class. So then it was like, you know, I felt, I felt a little burn after the first show, but after 24 hours, I knew I wanted to do it again. And then to come back and actually win my class the second time, then it was game on from there. Yeah. You haven't looked back. You haven't looked back. Um, no. Okay. Let's talk about, you are legit. Probably one of the strongest girls that I know. Like, like you train harder than most dudes. <laughs> it's not because we're friends. I don't, I'm not trying to pump your tires here, but like yeah. you, you, I've seen you like hip thrust five plates. I've seen you like any, I challenge any guy to like do a leg day with like Tosh and like, it's hard. Yeah. So, like I was actually, that'd be a funny, uh, like a funny YouTube video for the HD muscle stuff is to be like challenging one of the big meat heads to get through a leg day. A challenge. Honestly, no. I think it'd be funny to challenge Dorian just because he's a head boss. <laughs> but yeah, I don't know. That's true. But Dorian, Dorian won't be as funny. Fair. Co he, Cody, I 
is with me and I can't he's too slow man I can't wait that long between sets he's huffing and popping over there and I'm like let's go <laughs> fine true I mean I more athleticism I think it would be kind of fun to do Noah Noah would be kind of hilarious uh, yeah. obviously Quentin Quentin would yeah. be Quentin would cry Quentin if you're watching this <laughs> oh my god uh, um okay so because you train so heavy yes. right you train heavy you train hard does that do do girls ever like come to you and be like but I'm afraid I'm gonna get muscular or you know or like they might deter from wanting to work with you yeah um I don't know necessarily it's been a deterrent for people wanting to work with me, but I've definitely had people express concern over how much muscle they're going to build or even in terms of working with clients and them kind of being like, Oh, I don't know how much I should be lifting or me inquiring on how hard they're pushing themselves. And a lot of times I actually review videos of their training to get a sense for where they're at, both in terms of, ensuring their forms on point um but also seeing the intensity of their lifts and you know they'll blow through a set and like look like they're totally fine at the end of it and i'm like uh what <laughs> can we just quickly just defunct that myth first of all like yeah for anyone who's watching for any girl guy doesn't matter. just because you lift weights doesn't make mean you're gonna get super masculine or super muscular you got to eat and all that kind of stuff. And like, Tasha, you're a great example of it. Like you're feminine, but you're still strong. You're still strong. And you, like I said, you work out harder than anybody else I know. Um, question is, were you always strong or did you, you know, build up to it even more? Obviously you built up to it, but like yeah. when you first got to the gym, like you said, were, were you like, you're like, Oh, I can do like the 15s and the twenties. And like, yeah, I mean, I went into it with a decent amount of strength, but I think I'm going to have to credit my riding background on that because, like, your whole body is so engaged when you're on a horse. Got it. Um, and a lot of things that, you know, are important for heavy lifts, um, like my back, you, you just got to think about riding. You're constantly pulling like this. Your legs are constantly squeezing on the sides of the horse. Your you core crazy legs. Yeah, so your core is engaged to hold you up. So it's like there's there's so many things going on um, that are are helping you stabilize yourself and helping you control the horse. That I think I naturally had a pretty athletic physique to start. Um, so yeah, I, I mean, I definitely wasn't weak when I started working out by any means. I had a lot of imbalances because riding is also notorious for creating imbalances because it is a very oh. weird position activity whatever you want to call it um but you know yeah like I wasn't I would never say like I came to the gym weak like, I would go train with some of my girlfriends too initially and they would be like dying lifting tiny weights and I'm like what's wrong with you guys like come on let's, let's pick it up a bit who was the what was the video you did a like video with somebody on the HD muscle one, which oh, oh with Alicia <laughs> And yeah. Alicia, bigger, Alicia, we all, we love you. We love you, Alicia. But like, she was dying through your workout. The hip thrust killed me because she was like, "How many reps for how much weight?" And I'm like, <laughs> "I know." Oh, um, so I guess I'm going to ask you this because a lot of people who might watch this is going to become females who want, might want to work with you. It's what is something that like a female comes to you as a client or a potential client, and you see as a biggest mistake that someone would make. Honestly, it, it, balance is the word that comes to mind right away because so many times I hear like, oh, I'm doing this diet, I'm doing this training, and I just can't seem to lose weight. The problem I find is that when things aren't working together, then there's going to be a disconnect and the body's not going to respond. So your diet has to work with your training and then your mind has to work with everything else too because if your head's not in it properly your body's not going to respond properly and if your body feels like shit then your head's going to feel like shit so it's like everything's so connected and has to just be all working together and in balance for you to be getting the proper results so i really like when i'm working with someone i'm treating the whole person literally from top to bottom so it's not just about here's your diet 
eat this every day, whatever. It's extremely detailed and heads up even in terms of my check-ins. Like I check in with my clients every three to five days, whereas, you know, most of the time it's one week, every other week, once a month. How many clients do you have right now? If you don't uh, about forty. And so international. I, yeah, all over. Most of them obviously are within Canada and the US, but I have some um, I've had clients from Australia, New Zealand, Europe. That's amazing. Um, yeah. So let's talk about something now, which is we compete. Everybody who competes, aside from you know wanting to win, look good, and everything, there's these like there's this like four letter word that everybody wants to become. You know, like I have BB, I have BB Pro. You have been so close, so close. And I'm gonna get into this little touchy, touchy section here, Tosh. Um, yeah what's what's the what have what's what's the thing here are you break are you like not wanting it anymore did you like is it is it not as important anymore compared to before or and do you still want it so for yeah. anyone who's watching like the ivb pro card this is like your thing this is like your professional card that says you are the professional you can compete for money you can go around the world all that kind of stuff and tasha has always been literally like this i don't know if you can see but it's like this close um yeah Tosh, like, I'll, I'll let you take it like that movie where she's a, a bridesmaid but never a bride that's me with pro card <laughs> story of my life um yes i still want it it's funny because before the pandemic i feel like everything revolves around before the pandemic um if you had asked me you know obviously this would have been another year of me competing and trying to get my pro card and I was pretty excited and confident because this is also my first year as a master's. So once you turn 35, you're eligible to compete in that specific age group, which to me became an advantage um, instead of being tossed in with, you know, these genetic freak 20 year olds hoping for the best every time, which I was holding my own. You were totally holding your own. It's still a different ball game, right? Like you yeah. have girls coming in there that are just freaks like and god bless them like good for you i mean i wish i started when i was that age but you know i can't go there i'm not um so i have to look forward to what i can do and it felt like it was going to be a good year to get back to it but uh you know shit happens now we're going through all this and i decided to take a step back for the year um just because, A, I don't even know if Ontario is going to have shows, to be honest. Um, there are some lined up, but, uh, you know, things are getting canceled left, right, and center. Um, who knows what's going to happen with the fall when people start going indoors. I just, I'm the type of person that puts my heart and soul in a prep, and I would feel pretty devastated if I was, you know, two or four weeks out and the plug got pulled on my prep. Not to mention, I've been doing three or four shows a year every year for the past like six or seven years. So my body can handle having a year <laughs> to just chill. Agreed. I started to appreciate other stuff like that I wouldn't normally do. Um, cooking more, going for more hikes, enjoying the outdoors, getting back in touch with other things that I love. So there's been a lot of good that's come of it. And uh, yeah, but I, my dreams of being a pro have definitely not gone away. Um, they're just kind of chilling out and, uh, yeah, we'll see, see what the future holds on there. Cool. I think you'll, you're going to get it. I don't know when, but you'll get it. Cause it's, I don't think you've, I, for as long as I've known you, you haven't skipped a beat. Like it's, it's every year is always better. Every year is always, you know, something's improved and you're always so close. So you'll get there. Yeah. You'll get there. Um, with that being said, you, we were talking about this earlier. You said you're dieting. What are you dieting? Are you dieting for something? Like no. shoot or? Initially I'd started, I was like, maybe I'll start dieting in like May or June just to like do a mini cut to get to a better place to do a show in the fall. And then I, you know, started thinking about things more and like within the last four to six, six weeks, I was sort of like, eh, you know, I'm still not sold. Like even if shows did happen and we have to wear masks, I'm sorry, but show deals, days Wait, are straight. you have to wear a mask for shows? 
Yeah, like, like the on last stage. Some places, yeah. I would not. I would not compete. You have to be with. You have to be those photos forever, forever. Like what? <laughs> posting photos with your freaking. I get it's a snapshot in time and like it's everything. Like everyone's going through the same thing, but I just like I don't know how much I really want to remember COVID as like a <laughs> memorable time. Like let's try not to once it's done. Like move on. Um, but yeah, like I just Shoni is so stressful. You're depleted. Yeah hungry you're tired you dehydrated you're like everything's it's just a very unique feeling and then on top of that to not really be able to breathe properly because you're wearing a mask and the, think about this that mask has to match your suit exactly <laughs> you're gonna go get your you're gonna get your suit all blinged up as well and like well, not just Zorowski stuff on it they're doing that no <laughs> I, I'm gonna switch this up later. I'm gonna say picture and then you can insert it. Okay. Into okay, I totally will. All right. Yeah. Uh, let's get into now the rapid questions for for uh, Loco, which is I call it reps and sets. Cool. Sweet. Yeah. Right, let's do this. Squats or hip thrusts? Hip thrusts. Ten rounds of hit or one hour of a steady state? <laughs> one hour of steady state. <laughs> a Eight. lot. <laughs> a lot of clean food with no cheats or lower calories but you get a weekly cheat i will eat air if i can have a cheat once a week really <laughs> yes. uh, okay okay here we go Alyssa pacini angelica texera or janet lyo uh elisa and it's funny, I have to I have to hop in this rapid fire because I saw her pictures like three or four years ago and I said to Cody, this girl is going to be at the top of bikini one day and now what? So so you're a psycholo psychiatrist and a fortune teller and an Fair. online coach. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Um, all right, now let's talk, let's talk live great. Let's talk about you let's talk about your lifestyle and like it's everything about you is balance in life and you're such a family oriented person that's one of the things that when we first met I, I don't know if you remember when we first met when did we first uh, it was like uh, 65 it was at like a posing seminar it was my first posing I, seminar that it was the one with oh, Teresa did it right yes yes yeah. it was my first thing I was never I never competed I went there and then I saw you I think you were doing you're doing hack squats. You're doing like hack squats or something. And then I remember you came out, I'm like, oh, you're, you're, I'm like, hey, you're Tasha. And I was like, Hi. and you're like, hey, I'm like, hey. I was like, I'm sort of new to this. Thing. I, I didn't know anybody. Like yeah. none of my friends compete. None of my friends are in fitness at that time. I was like the single person. So anytime I went to one of these, like our fitness seminars and stuff, I'd just be the guy twiddling my thumb. And then you were like the only person that I sort of knew from like social or anything. So I was like, yeah. I'm, a tr I'm a just, you know, let's go say hi. Yeah, but it was cool. That was that was crazy. Um, so, star lifestyle, right? right? That's your that's your online coaching. That's your bread and butter. That's you. Um, you started that full time yourself, maybe a year ago. A year ago, or uh, literally almost like to the day a year ago. Really? Yeah. That's incredible. Oh, I'm curious. Pardon? I said, I'll have to look back because now I'm curious. Mm. And what ended up making that transition, that switch from, you know, originally you were with some other teams and being a head coach, and then now you, you're like, I want to do my own. What was that? Like? <sighs> you're trying to stir up some shit here, Wallace. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm not trying to, <laughs> no, no, no. I, what I mean by that is. Just kidding. Yeah, I know, I know. But. What I, I, I think I'm saying, I wanted to ask this from like an entrepreneurial standpoint. Yeah. Like the whole like thought behind it. So it, 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 I mean, there is no way to address this without there being some shit really. Um, and I would never speak badly of anyone that I worked with in the past. Every single person that I've worked with has contributed in a massive way, particularly my old team that I was on. 
Um, the amount of learning and growth that I had there was incomparable. I don't think that I would be anywhere near where I am today, having not come from that. Um, having said that, things changed last year. Um, I wasn't happy with how things worked out at one of my shows and it started getting the wheels turning on whether or not the partnership was to my best interest anymore mm. and what I was capable of doing on my own and whether that was something I needed to explore. Uh, so the more I started thinking about it, the more I thought, you know, like maybe this is a, a real possibility. Um, and it was kind of half my decision, half I was forced into it because in no longer wanting to be coached by my old coach, he didn't feel comfortable with me working with anyone else or even coaching myself um, while still being a coach on the team, which I didn't make sense. I understood from a business point of view, like if I'm not using one of the coaches from the team itself, yeah. then it doesn't make sense. 100%. So I did that. So I just decided that it was time to go my own way. It was a very hard decision. There was a lot of emotions involved. Um, you know, they were business partners, friends, like coach for years. Um, but, you know, sometimes change is good. A lot of times change is good, especially if you have a good attitude about it. I think yeah, if you, 100%. yeah, if you approach change with positive mind set and you believe that you will make the most of it regardless, then you will. And uh, it was scary as F, but I did it. And, you know, looking back now, I still truly believe that it was in my best interest. And I'm very, very happy with the direction that my business and my coaching has gone. And it's been a great experience. I think that's, that was really what I think I was trying to ask. I wasn't trying to stir anything. I wanted to, because <laughs> you were at, you were working with what we consider in our, our, our industry or stuff, one of the top coaching, coaching teams. Yeah. To be able to like break out and like go and do something on your own and, you know, sort of go from, you know, I don't want to call it ground zero, but ground zero as most people who want to start their own business or anything like that, they might not want to leave a comfy job or their, their yeah. regular nine to five to go pursue their dreams. So I wanted to ask you that because you're, like I said, you're killing it. You're doing amazing with it. So that's, that's what I want to ask. And it's been, like you said, you got four, it's been a year. So happy anniversary. Uh, Thank you. <laughs> and you've got over 40 clients and are they predominantly female, male? At this moment, I literally only have females. I have worked with some males in the past, but women tend to obviously, uh, I mean, I don't want to say obviously. I feel like, especially for lifestyle, women tend to want to work with a female. Um, and because of the image that I portray and how I talk about what I do, um, being more sort of empathic and understanding and encouraging versus some guys need more of that like hardcore approach, which I can definitely do. Um, for sure. <laughs> Ask Cody. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm as nitty gritty as they get, but I, you know, that's not what works for most of my clientele. So it's really important to be in tune to that too. Like you have to address every single individual as an individual and just start to learn um, how they respond, how they speak and take these cues and figure out how to interact with them to get the most out of them. Agree. Um, okay. I'll get to the next one is, so you, you talked about it, your top level equestrian jump athlete. Yes. Is that, is that a term? Athlete? Equestrian, <laughs> I know for that. But where does that start? How does one go and be like, I want to compete in that? <laughs> it starts with, Mommy and Daddy, I want a pony. <laughs> for everybody who's watching, that is Tasha in a nutshell. <laughs> And trust me, you can ask my parents. I did not let up on that for a solid five years. And those little stinkers, they kept delaying it. Because I remember they were like, yeah, when you're eight years old, eight came around. I'm like, where's so my first pony? Did they get you a pony or did they get you a horse? So they're, okay, pony and horse, essentially the exact same thing. The, 
the designation between them comes from the height. Okay. So is up to a certain height measured at this point on their kind of back. And then a horse is above that height. So yeah, you start on a pony typically as a kid because you're small and ponies are smaller. Uh, no yeah. one on a big ass, you know, Budweiser yeah. hope for the best. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so I so like riding to Sorry. jumping. So it went from riding, like just sort of riding to then. Yeah. I, I guess that was kind of on them because they decided where to take me for lessons. Like I didn't really know okay. that. Um, and the, you know, went to a farm when I was a kid and fell in love with jumping and then would just progressively, you know, changed different coaches as I got more advanced and eventually ended up doing like high level show jumping. What's harder bikini competing or, or equestrian? That's really tough because they're so dramatically different. I mean, in equestrian, it's difficult because you're in a partnership. And if your horse decides one day he wants to be an asshole, then you're pretty much screwed. Like, the horse that I actually still own him, he's on a lease at a, a farm up in Nobleton. But he, they always, it's like people, right? Like, if you are really good at something, you're usually a little nuts, too. And he was literally that. He was an exceptional horse, but like total jackass sometimes. Like just a nightmare. Would you, things and spin out of nowhere and you go flying off him. I was like, say, I was like, have you injured yourself doing equestrian? I don't know how. I haven't. No. Oh. Never, like, never broke anything. Never, like, I had some pretty bad falls, but nothing to any point where. I was, you know, hospitalized or in a cast or in a sling or whatever. Like, that's crazy. Really, really lucky. Really lucky. So, yeah, I don't, uh, but it, yeah, like the bikini then, like competing, you have to go through these grueling preps and, you know, you're pushing your body to its absolute max. So, I think. If I had to pick, I would say bikini comp competitor would be harder. Got it. But it. Either either or is a super challenge, and both of them have their risks and rewards. True. Um, would you do? Would you still compete Can't. in riding? Yeah, hundred percent. I've said many, many times. The second you know, that age I limit is there, like, or anything? That actually, one of the top pros, um, his name's Ian Miller. He just retired, I believe, within the last year or two. And I think he was in his, like, mid to late 70s. Whoa. Yeah. Still going over five-foot-plus jumps with horses all day, every day. That's insane. It's That's cool. For a bet. <laughs> that's super cool. Um, yeah. Is that something that you can – can you – horse horse riding is one thing horse jumping is that something that you can pick up fast or is that something you I feel like that's one of those sports that you're going to be better the younger you start like even for me having taken a long break but now coming back to it because I have such a solid foundation like I started riding when I was five and I was competing up until I was 29 so that doesn't go away um, but I've seen a lot of people try to learn riding sort of in their mid to later years. And it's, uh, I don't know, I get it's something about building like the hand eye coordination and like understanding the rhythm does for sure become a little bit more difficult, not to say that it's impossible. And again, everyone's different, but um, I, I truly believe the younger you start riding, the, the better you'll be. Got you. Let's talk from one animal to another. Let's talk Ludo. Let's talk Ludo. Is he, is he right in front of you? You have to wake him up. Hey, Ludo. For everyone who's watching, Ludo is Tasha's dog. What's the breed again, Tasha? He's a boxer. He is, he is like one of the sweetest dogs ever. I've had the chance to like, you know, hang out with him for a bit, chat. Hill, one sec, I'm gonna go get him. You can cool. continue. Okay, yeah. So for Ludo is one of those dogs that probably thinks he's a human being. Like if you ever watch whether it's Cody or 
Tasha's um, social media stuff, you'll see Ludo literally sitting there on the kitchen table or like hugging, sitting on the couch. Where's the human? Where's our, where's our human? There he is. <laughs> Ludo. I can't believe you just woke me up from my nap, mom. I'm so sorry. <laughs> How old is Ludo? He's 10 and a half. Ten and a half dog years or like year years. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, he's so good. How has he been? I know like he's got he's got he's been doing a lot of surgeries and stuff and he has one next week. Uh, I get what's he got this time? Um, so I, I'm gonna get very medical with you now. Boxers are prone to something called uh gingival hyperplasia, uh -huh. which like it's like kind of gingivitis combined with little bumpy things along their gum line um they're prone to all like lumps and bumps i get his bumps checked maybe every three months or so okay. and they'll just up see them all to see what's going on um he did have one that was cancerous but they removed it two years ago and it was a grade one didn't come back so that was good but uh yeah, they're bumpy little guys. So he's getting his teeth fixed up a bit. And then he has two tiny, tiny bumps that they just mostly want to remove as a precaution. Mm. Uh, as they're on his limbs and ones on the limbs tend to be a little bit more questionable. Yeah. Um, so the one came back not as anything, but I think they're concerned that it might one day change. Uh, and the other one came back with just like, kind of inconclusive so they're like we'll just get rid of them it's a, it's a quick little snip so i've been i've been seeing so obviously you take ludo to the park to the trails he loves it like he's so active he's such a he as much as he's like he kind of might sometimes looks like he's like super lazy but he's very active and you and cody have started training him like for like so actually that came about because um i guess within the last year i've noticed that his hind end was a little bit slower than his front end. Okay. It, almost like his hind end walks drunk sometimes. Uh -huh. And boxers are prone to something. And I haven't really spoken that much about it because I don't want to say that it's this because we don't know for sure. Um, but the fact that his mom had something similar, which was never fully diagnosed, the actual test for it is super expensive. It's like a DNA test that they have to do. Um, but it's called degenerative malepathy and essentially it's a spinal cord disease and they end up degenerating to the point that they lose all um, use of their back end and become paralyzed and most of them need like wheels like a little cart yeah. for them and eventually it does go progressively up the spine and then they lose all function and you have to make a tough decision so there's a lot of inconsistent symptoms with him right now um typically they get very weak and wobbly in the hind end like they have trouble getting on and off things they drag their hind paws they get like a sway he doesn't have any of that he just has the drunken thing um he's got a little bit of soreness in his back and uh once in a while he'll like stumble a bit but overall he's doing pretty good regardless I wanted to take him to um, start getting therapy because he is 10 and a half. He is very active and I want to make sure that he's comfortable and mobile as he gets yeah. old. And I'm one of those dog moms that's like, I will not buy whatever for myself to make sure that he's okay. 100%. Yeah. So with that. We started doing that and then now I have all these little exercises at home. He has to go over these little Cavaletti jumps and yeah. do stretches and... He thinks it's a game half the time, unless I have treats in my hand, so. I mean, that's amazing. It's good. Yeah. <laughs> Who's this? Hi, Ludo. <laughs> Who is that? Oh, Ludo. I love the dude. I miss the guy. Um, all right, next thing I want to talk about is, I think for a lot of people who watch this, it's one thing to be in fitness. It's one thing to, you know, compete. What's, it's another thing to be having your life partner in fitness as well. Yeah. Do you find it hard or do you find it easier than most regular society and like the regular relationships? Yeah. So it's funny because I can actually compare the two because I was with someone before while I was competing 
who did not do any competitions or fitness related stuff. Um, and it definitely had its challenges. I won't say it was impossible. I think that if you have a supportive partner, whether they compete or not, uh, it's going to work. Um, and that wasn't even the reason that we didn't end up staying together actually. So it, it definitely wasn't like the, the deal breaker. Yeah. Uh, there was a lot of issues around family stuff. Um, for example, like going to family dinners and obviously I was dating someone who was part of a large Italian. So every other day was someone's birthday or some event or something that I was sitting there not eating at. And everyone's like, what the heck's wrong with you? So that was a little tough just having to explain myself, but people became more understanding. Yeah, um, totally and I, being able to voice how you feel about your goals and your passions and not just like saying this is how I am, like accept it, but trying to help people understand why you are the way you are and what you're doing is a little bit more productive. But uh, yeah, it, it's been great to actually be with someone who's in the industry. And it's funny too, because there's been times that Cody and I have prepped together and there's been times that one or the other has been prepping. And again, like you can make any situation work, but I would say that it is a little easier when both of you are either off season or on prep together, because if you're both off season, you're both living life, enjoying, go eat, do whatever. If you're on prep, you're both like, don't talk to me. Don't look at me. Don't touch me. <laughs> Just who's, leave me alone. who's the worst prep person? You, you or Cody <laughs> when they're on prep? I just want, I want you to, to, to guess. I'm curious. <laughs> I think it's you. Oh, come on. <laughs> I think it's only you because I think Cody, he'll just, just leave me alone and he'll just go to like, he'll maybe like just go into his car and then like, that's it. Like, even Ludo's rolling his eyes. He's like, come on, Wallace. Come on. Fine, fine. Um, he's definitely the more irritable one out of the two of us. When I'm dieting, I just get really quiet and, uh, like more to myself. Like I just, I, I'm very much tunnel vision and I'm just kind of like, yeah, okay, my thing. And I still do, like, I'm kind of the one who does all the household stuff too, because he's always working at the gym. So I, I don't know. I'm, I'm more of a, like, just put your head down and do what you got to do kind of person. Mm -hmm. um, or he tends to be maybe, like, a little bit more on the emotional side when he's dieting. Like, a little more trigger-happy, irritable. We could get – we, we, we already know. I figured it out. <laughs> like, throw him too hard under the bus. But uh, either way, it's completely manageable. Like, we don't – kill each other on prep or anything like that um it's That's just something to, if you're gonna do this you have to accept that the person you're with is not gonna be themselves when they're dieting i think you guys are good because like at least you guys both understand like, yeah when someone's maybe you know irritable you're like okay i get it it's your yeah. third low day in the week you know or like oh you're super happy you must have had like a cheat meal or something like it makes it much more easier so that's yeah. that's really that's really cool to see um, all right, let's get into something of the the next part, which is YOLO. So this is going to be our rapid fire for this segment. Okay, cool. It's very, this one's a little shorter one, but. Okay. Would you rather do a tropical beach life or the cottage life? Tropical beach. The Grand Canyon, Amazon rainforest, or the Himalayas? I think Amazon rainforest. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, Minus, Dog. pardon? <laughs> I said minus the spiders. Oh, five. Dog trainer or equestrian trainer? Oh, come on. I, okay, I love having a dog. I feel like I'm not sure if training them would be as rewarding as being on a horse. So I'm going to go with horses. Okay. And then last one is. Would you rather have more dogs or would you have like kids? <laughs> Come on. 
No, like I'm, I'm allowed to ask this because I know you. <laughs> no. For anyone who's watching, they they don't have to know I can. So I just yeah. had to throw it out. Justice, just to see. I just, know. Just waters. All right. All right. So Tasha, oh. we're gonna go into something now. I'm gonna share my screen and we're gonna go into social hour. So you as a bartender, you know about social hour. You know, yeah. it's a, we all get happy, we have a little, a little nice break. We're gonna do that, but we're gonna go into your socials. Okay. So I'm gonna share my screen and we're gonna go into your socials and uh, we're gonna get some of like, you know, the behind stories and scenes and like stuff about it. Cool? Okay, deal. Yep. Right. Let's see. And this is it. Can you see that? Yep. All right, Tosh, let's talk about this. Yeah. <laughs> what is this? What is this photo? I had to bring this up because a first off, this is hard work. This is sweat equity. <laughs> that was. I don't even remember when that's from. I don't know if I can see, but um, uh, February twentieth, twenty sixteen. Twenty sixteen. So I was prepping for Arnold's. I would have been like two ish weeks out Ooh. from. Ar I think we we're doing this together. Yes. Yes, that was the one. Yes. Yeah. This is insane. Like the amount of like what it takes to get there from whether it's a, a male or a female is incredible. That was really cool. That was actually really cool to sort of prep with you for the Arnold's. Like I remember you'd be like, yo, are you dying? I'm dying. How? <laughs> <laughs> Cause it's, it's, I'm not a big dude. So like, and you're a much more um, calorie higher female so like our diet was sometimes very similar me uh, sorry calorie higher female have you heard what my last few preps have been like that's how much i was on dude i don't i have i've been like zero carb zero fat and two hours of cardio every prep for the last four shows me yeah <laughs> it's insane but regardless i just wanted to bring this up see if you remembered it and uh, it's crazy to look back on it because honestly that's not even my leanest and that is freaky it is incredible all right let's go into the next one which is i'm oh. like bring what oh <laughs> let's see all right so i'm actually gonna play it so so funny okay so i just got to the second half of muscle beach and this tire is huge <laughs> but these guys are challenging me to flip it so you know i'm gonna try <laughs> Okay, so I just got to the second half. Oh. Oh. <laughs> so that was hilarious there was literally like I, i'm not sure if this is the politically correct way to even refer to them i feel weird saying it but there was two homeless guys essentially that were on the beach there um sort of living on the edge and they were the ones that were egging me on and like ah. oh, my little pump up crew they were so sweet it was awesome oh that's great and like i think this is a cool example because it was like you don't back down from a challenge like no. this is very you this is so you to be like, yo, you challenge me? I will try it. Well, I had been flipping the small one, and there was, like, this giant one there. And they're like, come on, try what? the big one. And I was like, all right. What were you doing in uh, Muscle Beach? In so uh, me and my friend went down there two summers ago just for, like, a five-day trip to Miami. And it's actually when I went to shoot with Orangutan down there as well, who's uh, uh True. Amazing. Yeah. All right. Next one. Oh God.
All right. So preface for everybody who's watching this, Tasha is taken. Cody will kill any of you guys trying to go into this. <laughs> but um, that's something that no one knows about you too. Is you're you're a car girl too. I'm a total gearhead. You you and your Subi. You've yeah. I've had the Subi for as long as I've known you. Well, I've had multiple Subis, but a Subi for as long as you've known me. Yes. So, what I think? What did you write here? You're like, when a, when the adrenaline is no long or something no longer fits your macros, so you have to find another alternative. Oh, when donuts no longer fit your macros. Uh, <laughs> uh, so, is that did did you know how to do that yourself or? Yeah. I like how you just yeah yeah you know. Just. <laughs> so, yeah, no, I I. I don't remember when it was like it was years back um <laughs> my poor parents when they used to let me drive their jeep cherokee and i decided that i wanted to be a stunt driver so i would go to parking lots in the middle of winter and just do stupid shit i think they i blew the tranny in it twice oh, geez. <laughs> i don't know what's wrong with the car guys you gotta get it fixed <laughs> but uh yeah i've always loved cars um and all different kinds i like exotics i like tuners like uh, you know finally last year i ended up getting the sti i yeah. had a w for two different wrx years and then uh i upgraded last year so um but like everything muscle like if what? it's fast got power i'm good what's the dream car Honestly, I I don't even feel like I have one because I feel like I have one for every category. So I I don't know if I can nail that right, down. Right, I'll give you the I'll, I'll narrow this down more. Like if you can get any car you want right now. Oh man, I honestly don't know. Fine. I, I Fine. Can't answer that because it, there's just too many like it would depend on what okay it was i don't your know car, you... your car to go to your trails to your you know to, to your get groceries your everyday car i think that if like right now if i had the money to do it and do it like well not no shit no junk job like everything and it would have to be the fastest one, like, in the whole world. I would tune my STI to the max. So it was, like, painfully fast. Because it's still a very practical car. It's got all wheels. It it's very practical. Four-seater. It's got good trunk space. But, like, as is, it rips. And I know that you, like, that car is so easy to tune. And you could do some crazy... Um... Sorry, have you have you ever driven the the Benz GLA? No, I don't think I have. Okay, so like I have a bunch, of, I have a couple of friends from like work and all the stuff that they have. Uh, they've got a couple of them. Yeah, they're they're called like the rich person's WRX. Oh, nice. So, if you should go one day to like the the dealership and try it out. Huh? I will have to check it out. It's it's like for someone who's not a big car guy. But yeah. I love cars. I like I love everything about cars. I just don't drive them. Um, it's pretty damn good. That's sweet. Do you go? Do you go? Do you go race with uh, with Cody and the crew? No, I don't. Because and I could like I know that they would let me drive one of their cars or whatever. That'd be great. And Cody's truck is ridiculous. Like it's stupid fast. And honestly, like almost intimidates me to drive it sometimes. But. Uh, I don't know. I just, I haven't gone out there myself, but, uh, it's still nice to be surrounded by a group of people that also has crazy cars and that I can get in and rip once in a while and have some fun. So, yeah. well, but I do have to make my way out to just have a track experience one day. Okay. All right. This is the perfect transition into, um, this photo. Oh God. <laughs> oh my God. Oh boy. Tasha, explain what what's happening here. Well, looks like I'm uh leaning on some type of an exhaust muffler situation and also getting in or out of a car. <laughs> so 
that was back in my import days when I was like a cheesy import fest model. And I was one of those girls walking around the car shores, shows in booty shorts, handing out flyers, sitting on the hood of people's cars for photos. And Do you remember how old you were when you did this? What's that? Do you remember how old you were around this time? I feel like I was maybe between 19 and 21. And <laughs> has Cody seen this? Cody has seen this one. I think so. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Uh, but it's, it's, <laughs> you know what you kind of look like? You kind of oh. look like Britney Spears a little bit. Oh my God. Do you know who I used to get all the time? Um, Ashley Simpson, Jessica Simpson's sister. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yes, you're right. Oh. Yeah. I mean, you're getting compared to Jessica Simpson and Britney Spears. Hey, like, fine. No, no complaint. First Just of all, problems. Maybe not recent Britney Spears, but. <laughs> okay. I'm just going to do one last one. I think this one sums up a lot about you, about like lifestyle and like your whole brand and everything about you, which is this one. Uh, okay. Yeah. This is all about balance and it's all about exactly what you wrote in the middle, which was after many failed attempts at dieting. And then you found this balance. Um, yeah. do, you, do you remember specifically all these three stages? Oh yeah. Very clearly. What was the before? So before, um, I was cr- dealing with chronic anxiety to the point that I almost never had an appetite because I was so stressed out. I'm one of those people that when I get anxious, like anxious, stressed, um, my appetite tanks mm. and at the beginning of the pandemic, just like so much uncertainty. And I haven't had problems with anxiety in so long. And like, I think I dropped two or three pounds the first two weeks just from being stressed out. So that's, uh, that was a major issue back then. I was probably between 18 and 21 ish, even around like the car show times. Um, then the middle, I, you know, was on and off with diets on and off with training. I was bartending full time drinking and eating shit full time (laughs) and uh, just not really taking care of myself. Um, I wasn't quite as anxious, but also definitely not anywhere near uh, a healthy mental, emotional state either. Um, Then the right was actually a photo shoot I did after my first Arnold's in 2014. So I had already done, I think, I think that would have been my fourth competition. Okay fourth or fifth show and uh so yeah I I had been used to dieting and competing for a little bit and was a lot more healthy mentally physically um still kind of just easing into competing and growing but definitely in a way better place that's amazing that's amazing you that's cool all right I'm gonna close this and do that all right so all right Tasha pretty much that's pretty much it I know you have got to eat soon so um we went through everything we went through everything but um you I tell people all the time that I bring on the guests they've got they're always on some sort of stage for you you've always you've been on the competing stage now this is the serving it up podcast stage and feel free take take it do what you want to do and let the people know anything that's like you know going on where they can find you if they want to like work with you or if they want to maybe talk to you about your maybe psychology stuff or talk about getting into horses or dogs or ludo anything like that the stage is yours tasha awesome yeah i mean i communicate um with everyone on instagram so long as it's a respectful message i will always answer so feel free to shoot me a dm anytime about anything um from what I'm wearing to where I'm hiking to what to feed your dog to obviously my business. Um, that is at Tasha underscore star underscore fitness. And if you don't do Instagram, you can email me as well. Tasha star fitness, all one word at gmail.com. And uh, again, I love, you know, communicating with everyone, hearing about people. I am 
a normal person like everyone else. Um, so I like to be real with everyone and stay as down close to the earth as humanly possible. So yeah, don't be afraid. I might come off as intimidating sometimes, but uh, I love hearing from everyone and speaking to new people and learning about new things. So shoot me a message. I'm always happy to chat. That's amazing. Well, Tosh, thanks for being on the podcast. Thanks for Ludo for, you know, having a little cameo. And yeah, this was episode five of Serving Up Podcast. Um, thank you guys for watching. Until the next one.